Thank you to Curology for sponsoring a portion of today's video. If you're hiding from your hair because you hate it, I get it. I know I'm not supposed to say that. And it almost exposed my brain. So you know what, it really got the knowledge in there real fast. Right on time. When I started my natural hair journey, I was hoping that the texture of my hair would be something like this. And the hair that you're born with, you know, your natural hair that belongs with you, still there. And the disappointment is palpable. <laughs> Hi, I'm Danielle. I do too much. I like hair, talking, cosplay, music, art, and stuff. I haven't done that in a while. <laughs> so I've been wearing a protective style for most of this year. And uh, I think I've gained a lot of insight on when you shouldn't. And when you should be doing that, let's get into it. First, you should not have in a protective style when you're not gonna take care of it. Just, you have to be honest with yourself about it. Sometimes I have put these in when I'm just like, there have been times where I've had in a protective style, like my passion twists, and I'm just like, I am going to let you starve. And then she starves and I'm like, I can't believe she starved. <laughs> then at some point in your life, you have to take out the protective style and deal with what you've done. So if you're going to put in a protective style, especially passion twists, which are my personal favorite, we can do a whole video on how I install mine and what I do in detail if you want, comment. If you're going to do that, go ahead and just know what you gotta do. And if it's the bare minimum, at least do that consistently because your hair is still herring under there and you should be caring out here that almost made sense you shouldn't protective style when you're hiding from your hair um, um <laughs> as a 4c girly i have a little bit of expertise on this if you're hiding from your hair because you hate it i get it i know i'm not supposed to say that the thing about it is I have hated my hair. I have. I have absolutely hated it. Or I guess a more accurate word. Oh, here comes Sam. Hello. Right on time. When I started my natural hair journey, I was hoping that the texture of my hair would be something like this. Literally, I've been walking my dog and a person has said, ooh, she got good hair. And I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> that is so unfortunate <laughs> that someone thinks like that, and that if it was 2009, I would have thought the same thing. <laughs> I'm gonna walk that back, actually. Hate is a very strong word. Um, disappointed severely, always trying to make it something it's not, always hoping and praying that it changed, um, being very stubborn with what I had, uh, envying others, um, being very unappreciative of what I had and had to work with, that. And I absolutely used a protective style as not a band-aid, but more of like a disguise, really. And yeah, that was no good. My hair is beautiful and it deserves to be thought of as beautiful by me, the one who's growing it. <laughs> so I actually regret those days of um, processing my hair, um, shaving. Well, no, I looked awesome with the mohawk. Mm, I regret nothing about that, but using protective styles as a way of hiding from my hair because I was so ashamed of it. I had the bad texture of hair, the hair that no one wanted. It's not true. And by protective styling, especially in another texture of hair, kind of cosplaying the hair that you want at that moment to have been born with, it's doing a lot more harm than good not necessarily in like a tactile or physical way, but emotionally and mentally. Because when it comes out of your hair and the hair that you're born with, you know, your natural hair that belongs with you, still there. And the disappointment is palpable. <laughs> Sometimes you might be thinking, oh, you know what? I just need a break. My hair needs a break. But in the back of your mind, you're like, I want to appear the way I want to appear and it's out of secret self-loathing. 
That's not good for you. If you want to appear the way you appear just because you want to appear, that's just fine. But if you're doing it out of like that little back, way back, way back in your kitchen, way back in the nap, if you secretly know you're doing it because you don't like your hair, I think it's a good idea to not protective style at that moment. Because you're kind of confirming your own worst fear of, I would look better if I were born differently in terms of my hair. And that's, hmm, that's a unique problem that um, I have a lot of personal experience with. And trying to conform to a particular cultural beauty standard, having to do with certain features, if you know, you know. <laughs> All my life I had to fight. Subscriber. <laughs> Don't do it. At some point, it's just better to cross the bridge, accept it, and then be able to, you know, change up your style because you just want to instead of running from you in that way. Source, trust me. <laughs> While I've already committed to protecting my hair and being a lot more <laughs> intentional about doing so, protective style or not, I also wanted to put a lot of energy into protecting my skin this year, which is why I want to thank Curology for sponsoring this portion of the video. For those who don't know, Curology is an incredible skincare brand that is committed to helping you and your specific needs. For me, my particular goals are keeping these fine lines at bay forever, hyperpigmentation from previous scars. Also for me in particular, fighting off aging before it even gets to me is very important to me. And there are so many products on the market that you don't know what's actually going to work and what's just a trend, but now you do because Curology is that girl. <laughs> Plus, they re-up on your shipment so you don't run out of stuff and you're just sitting there with a dry face not knowing what to do until your next shipment comes in. They overlap it so you'll never have that issue again. I really love the specialized care aspect of Curology as well. It makes it super easy to get access to highly specialized and powerful dermatologic ingredients and a skincare routine. You have a licensed dermatology provider on your side the whole time. And I think that's great. And particularly on a super personal note, I think this is a really good time to get into a customized skincare routine. I just have a sense of camaraderie. I think a lot of people, myself included, obviously, are doing their best to improve things about themselves internally and externally. And I think it's great investment. And especially if you've been struggling with certain skincare issues, I think it's always worth the effort. How about you mosey on to that link you see on the screen, darling, and start your Curology journey today. And so I wish you all the best of luck. And thank you again to Curology for sponsoring this part of the video. And let's get back to my tips and tricks about hair. Me. You shouldn't protect a style when it's too tight. We all say it, but we all we all have to learn, apparently. Um, I learned, and it was actually a double whammy because that was me cosplaying, I want to say, maybe like a 2B. Yeah, that was installed way, 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 way too tight. So, got my comeuppance uh, two for one. Very efficient uh, learning process. <laughs> and it almost exposed my brain. So you know what, it really got the knowledge in there real fast. Protective styling too tight is actually a destructive styling technique. You're actively undermining your own hairs. It's like when you go to the salon and like you're getting acrylics or SNS or something and the manicurist like is filing your nail down like really thin. They're like, that process is actively wearing down what you have naturally and then putting a protective coating on it so they'll grow out. No, because when you take off that protective coating, your nail is all flimsy under. Like the process by which you did that actively undermined the, the structure that you already have. So you just have to do it forever. And when you finally decide to stop, 
There's a lot of damage that can be done. As an alopecia queen, I already know. I speak from absolute experience. So here's why you should protective style, in my opinion. Vacation. Me and my sister went on a cruise. You better believe light speed I slapped these things in my hair. Overnight, took me three hours, lightning speed. I cannot emphasize how much I love my hair. And I cannot emphasize how much I will avoid doing my hair on vacation. I cannot, the two things can coexist. I can't emphasize this enough. I am here for sips, quips, dipping my hip in the pool, that's it. Bores. <laughs> Chocolate bores. <laughs> I was gone for like, what, 10 days? Three of those 10 days, I was doing my full routine. I brought my routine, okay? And I did that thing on vacation, spritz spritz, zlips lips, do the things, bare minimum. Which brings me into another point when you should protective styles when you have the routine down. I remember the first time I put in passion twists, I was doing a hair growth challenge. So I was already very prepared to continue taking care of my hair, even while it was wrapped up in things. <laughs> while it was wrapped up. <laughs> Like when my hair is in a protective style, it's not at boarding school, it's at daycare, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna come and pick you up, I'm gonna give you some food and some love, and then it's off to daycare the next day again. Bye-bye, ta-ta. <laughs> not boarding school, where, or like, what, military camp or something? <laughs> to sleep in the wilderness and forage for berries. <laughs> You need the juices and the berries, that's the problem. But the hairs, they can't forage for themselves. This metaphor is falling apart. <laughs> when the weather is too much, okay, okay. Once again, love my hair. Always have to preface with that, ya girl. <laughs> Still struggles, still struggles, okay? And it's gonna be, it's gonna take time and it's gonna take growth, okay? And growth, okay? I still struggle. With shrinkage, I still struggle. It's been years. And unless I have styled my hair to be short in that wash and go that everybody loves, including me, unless I styled it to be short, I wanna show off my legs. That's what I wanna do. I don't even know how long it is. I've basically had these in on and off for like the entire year. So like, <laughs> I don't even know how long my hair is anymore. So I live in the South and when I tell you this humidity, you feel like you're in a pot of stew. <laughs> Gumbo, yeah, chili. If you do a braid out and the humidity is humidity-ing, your hair is about to go from right about here to right about here. And that makes me so angry. I don't really know how to get over that to be honest with you. <laughs> I'll literally check the forecast and like try to um, like coordinate my natural hairstyles with the weather and hopefully like for special occasions, it won't be humid. Oh. I want my hair to be out and free and fluffy and like va va voom so much that I'll basically obs like obsess over the length and volume to the point where I'll overdo my hair. I want long hair today. I want long hair tomorrow. And I want long hair the day after that. And I'm like, it's time. Then I do my magical girl dance. That was it. Uh, uh, do not steal. And I <laughs> put in my passion twist. When it's super, super cold outside, if you didn't know, I'll tell you. Um, super cold, frigid, dry air will steal all the moisture out of your hair, especially if you have low to medium-ish porosity like I do. And especially if you have 4C hair, um, I don't know what else to tell you because again, I've worked too hard for all this hair. This is one that kind of ties into the vacation and kind of ties into like early mornings or just getting out the door, you know, if you have like vinyls or something like that and you just do not have the time to do your hair, but you like me are just like so Southern that you can't even go outside in a scarf. Like I can't, I can't. Faster hairstyling. I wake up, I, 
I had to wake up at 6.30 for an appointment like a couple of days ago. I woke up, I put my hair in a ballet bun, hello, and I was out the door. Nice. If my natural hair was in, I'm not sure what I would have done. I guess I would have scheduled it later in the day. <laughs> Quick styling, you know, natural hair is beautiful and delicate and it has its wonders, but it does take time to style, at least for me. Unless it's a wash and go, it takes forever to style and then you could just go and go and go. <laughs> uh, or maybe a braid out, maybe. And a puff, maybe. Those are the only three styles that are quick for me to like zhuzh and go quickly and even technically the wash and go still takes about like 10-ish minutes to style. If I really need to get out of the house very quickly, especially like back to back, um, I'm going to put in passion twists. It's just, you know, you, sometimes you just gotta do it. This year there have been two reasons that I've been protective styling and here they are when you need a break. Once again, I didn't really know I needed a break until I was burnt out, again. Um, seasonal depression over here is, is built different and I needed a break and my hair needed a break because if you didn't know, alopecia attack at the top of this year and um, yeah, <laughs> it's not been fun. I needed a break and I understood the routine. I knew how to take care of my hair and I knew that it was going to be for my betterment uh, to not worry about it and not to have to see it and touch it and lament my loss every day, um, not put pressure on myself to film my hair all the time. It just, it just made more sense. Um, and the other reason is, I think when, when your hair needs protection, you know? I already talked about the weather, but that was more for like styling and the winter was a little more protection, but like over-processing or over-processing. Like hair loss, I embraced it and I showed you guys a lot of ways to style around a big old patch of your hair missing at the top of your head. A bunch of you guys didn't even know. I'd say like a fifth of my hair fell out. Like, whoa, maybe even a fourth and a half. My goodness. So that served its purpose and then it was time to really get back into the putting back into myself pouring into myself, pouring into my hair, taking care of myself, which I tend to not be very good at uh, at the end of the year when it gets cold and sad. And so my hair needed protection. I needed protection. I think that's a really good reason to put in a protective style. <laughs> Works for me. <laughs> Sometimes your hair needs to rest like you need to rest. And honestly, this bun let both of us do that. Let me do that. And yeah, that's it. Subscribe. <laughs> Don't forget to like, share, subscribe if you enjoyed the video.